Returnees to South Sudan come with everything they can carry or push, everything they own, even their rickshaws. Since South Sudan gained its independence last July, thousands of Southerners have made their way back to their homeland. Fizia Ernero is 30 years old. She was born in Sudan, but her family has southern roots. So she, her father, mother and siblings have all come home. They traveled by car and then by barge down the Nile. It took them six months to get to Juba, the capital of South Sudan. Still, Fizia is enthusiastic to be here. <laughs> The moving process is painfully slow. Transport is poor, limited, and costly. The challenge we are facing is since these people are not only coming with their own bus and belongings, they are also bringing the, the entire household item together with them. David Messine Branke lived in Khartoum, Sudan, for 51 years. He worked as a loom fixer and then a carpenter. He says independence for South Sudan meant it was time to come home. I'm moving back. It is being said that anyone must go to his country. For him, too, the trip was long and arduous. But he is here to prepare the way for his sons to also return. I have, I uh, was having a two, four, five. Are they coming back here too? They are coming back. They are still there. Just I want to go to make a place, to see a place under the mango tree, when I will see the place for them, and then I go and bring them. For many of these families, there is much to do. They have to find a place to live, some in villages, some in Juba. They will have to build homes and find work. Supplies are expensive and often hard to come by, and many services such as paved roads, schools and hospitals don't even exist yet. But despite the long waits and the challenges ahead, the enthusiasm of the returnees seems unmuted. They are here to stay, and happily so.